Well, firstly, Matty, happy birthday, um, clinging on. Um, in, in terms of the summer for an under-18s manager, how have you had to adapt training, contact time with the players to, to deal with the current uh, global pandemic that we're dealing with? Obviously, there's been non-contact training for the first couple of weeks as by the um, EFL instructions and, and the protocol that's been given. So you just, you just have to adapt and, and plan your sessions in, in advance and, and just make sure that the players are getting the maximum development out of every session that they can. And, and that's what we've been doing. Um, it's been it's been different, but we've embraced it and, and, and we've got on with it. And that's all about the, the department, isn't it, in terms of the planning process? Because, as you say, you've put in probably plans in place that you've never had to do before. So oh, exactly, it's yeah. it's all about, as you say, adapting to the situation. Yeah, exactly that. And, and it's it's definitely different, like I said, and it's just making sure the protocols followed followed to um, by the letter and, and but the players at the same time are getting worked hard and, and they're getting challenged. How have they responded to those challenges? Yeah they've been good they've been good on the whole we had three weeks now this is our third week and with, with the game tomorrow it'll be our first game against deep in against the men's side which will be a test for us physically definitely so um, and we've been pleased with them that their fitness levels are good and, and they're getting up to speed now it's about getting into the games and and working on stuff that, that we want to and the way we want to play this season moving forward. Yeah, the first team obviously had programmes because they didn't really know when their season was going to finish. Obviously, the academy season finished before the League One season was curtailed. So mm. I guess you were able to plan a little bit during the summer in terms of what they can and can't do. Yeah, we were. And, and planning was key, especially with, with what's gone on. Um, we had loads of discussions over Zoom, as I'm sure everybody has, um, as to the way we were going to go about it and, and how we were going to work moving forward. And I think it's gone really well. And um, like I've always said, it, it's key for me to, um, and for us as a department and as an academy, to challenge our players highly um, all the time, but also support them um, in, this, in the same manner. And, and that's what we feel like we've been doing. Yeah, three players obviously last year got developmental one-year deals. Will Blackmore, Archie Jones, and, and Brad Volt. We've always been been training with the first team and also featuring in the, in the pre-season games. Are you pleased to see um, the club hand those kind of deals out to give those players time to to adapt? Yeah, definitely. It's been brilliant. Obviously, I think they deserve them. The gaffer spoke about it. He doesn't give contracts out um, willy-nilly. I think his words were, and, and I completely agree with that. Um, they burn those those contracts, but now um, it's important that even if they don't go into the first team straight away, which not many youngsters do coming out of the youth team, um, they're few and far between that, that, that we as a club look after them in the right way, which I'm sure we will with, with the current structure we've got. It's a brilliant structure for young players to come through. Um, but, you know, Brad and Archie may need a little bit, a bit, a bit of time, just like other players that, that have come through recently. So um, the club's in a good place in that, in that aspect. There's lots of good youngsters coming through. Hopefully, um, in the next few years, they'll be ready to kick on, and, and some of them are already kicking on now in the first team. Yeah, and speaking to some of those young players that are featured, like Flynn Clark, Ricky J. Jones, but also those that we just mentioned there, it's, it's nice that there's so many of them of a certain age because they can help each other through the challenges that yeah. often arise. And there will be challenges. So that's the thing that... Um, I said to them when they were in the youth team and now I'm doing a little bit more with them in, in the 23s work is that it's not going to be easy, it's going to be bumps along the road and um, sometimes you'll feel like you're not really involved and, and not you know involved on a match day and it's different feelings playing week in week out for the youth team so they've got to adapt to that and hopefully um, a few of them will go out on loan as well and, and that will be a big help for them. Yeah you mentioned those players went out on loan, Brad actually went out on loan last year and said just like Carl did when he went out on loan, that it really does benefit them in terms mm. of playing men's football because you are playing for points. And, yeah. and often that, you know, you can replicate that youth team football, but this yeah. is livelihoods that people are affected by. Definitely, and, and ultimately that helps and when hopefully they go back here and, and in a couple of years or whenever down the line that they're, they're ready for the first team environment. And it's important to play three points on a Saturday. And, and that's what I've always um, drilled into the players, especially in, in the professional development phases. Yes, of course, the, the development of the individual player is key and, and that's our role, but, I like to think that we can do that alongside winning as well and, and prepare them for the first team and, and um, thank, you know, thankfully moving forward it, it, or in the past as well it's been going okay. Yeah. Brad mentioned when I spoke to him obviously you've been doing some coaching in the afternoon with some of those younger players and, and, and that must be really beneficial to them so they get one-on-one -on -one coaching but also for you as well in terms of a bridge way to, to the 23s which mm -hmm. you're going to be a part of this year. Yeah no it's been brilliant the manager asked me to come in and do it in the afternoons after taking the the youth team in the morning. I've really enjoyed it. It's stretching me as a coach. It's developing me. Um, you know, working with with older players, albeit I know most of them because they've come through the youth team. But um, it's definitely helping me and helping my development. And you know, as a coach, you're always trying to develop and always trying to learn. 
uh, all the time and I feel like I'm definitely doing that at the minute. Yeah, because everyone talks about having a player pathway from the academy into the 23s and into the first team, but if there's a coach's pathway as well mm. that gives you the opportunity to further your development, that can only be key too. Oh, without a doubt, without a doubt, and, and, it, and it has helped me and it, it's definitely going to stretch me as in, in managing my time and making sure my planning is correct, but if that's the case then, then I'm, I'm sure I'll only um, become a better coach throughout the season and that's, like I said earlier, from the structure that I've got in place now, I'm from the first team manager all the way through to, to the top of the club with, with the owners. It's in a good place and um, everyone's thriving. Yeah, and providing it's competitive, 23's football can only really be a benefit to, to young players coming through, but obviously also first team players that are chomping it a bit to get to get match action because yeah. you, know, you can have reserve team football, but it's it, by its nature is, is designed yeah. for certain things. Yeah, 23's football definitely has its, its value, especially for the younger players. Um, it's a step up for them and obviously for the for the first team players if they need minutes. Um, I'm not sure how many will play this season because purely because I think the, the first team and, and their fixture um, schedule is going to be quite hectic but there is going to be plans to, to get games in as, as often as we can because it's important the younger lads who aren't getting as many minutes are still developing. Yeah, obviously the academy are pushing for Category 2 status mm. and as someone that's come through an academy and, and as someone that's obviously worked in, in academy for the last couple of years. It's great for those players coming through to see facilities improve, more coaches being on hand to help their development and it shows how ambitious the owners are as well as the current staff here to, to make it happen. Yeah, first and foremost, full credit's got to go to the, to the owners for, for going through with this um, after you know the pandemic that we've had. It's, it's admirable really and, and it shows what a good place the club's in and, yeah, and it can only be brilliant for, for the academy as a whole and, and for the football clubs that go up to Category 2 status, means better opposition, means better quality of players that you'd be playing against and means that our coaching needs to be just as good to, to compete with these, these academies. So, yeah, really exciting time ahead. Yeah, I mentioned um, in terms of planning is important. Communication is always important as a footballer, but when you've got so much going on in your department, obviously working mm. with Kieran and obviously mm. the first team, Talk is cheap, not talk is cheap, but talk is really important, isn't it? Because you need to, to make sure you know what the left hand's doing. Yeah, without a doubt. And that's why you know the clarity from, from the manager all the way down needs, needs to be right. And it, it is, to be fair, the gaffer's fantastic. And I'm always told um, plenty of time in advance of, of what I need to do during the week. And then I can plan accordingly. And, that, and that's fine. And, and that's the best way to work. Um, the scheduling your week in the right way. And, and it's definitely happening here. And, and ultimately, my job's to that half an hour that I have the, the 23s in the afternoon is to make them a little bit better. How, how much better, who knows, but to try and make them a little bit better, plant some seeds in their head and um, you know when they go with the first team to, to go and flourish. Brad said after he scored his hat-trick he owed a, a lot to you and Si in terms of the work that he's done, not necessarily on the ball, but the pressing that comes with you know the, the first team environment is mm. to make sure you never stand still. Yes. You must have been proud, though, as coaches, to, I know it's only pre-season, to see him score three goals in a, in a first-team friendly. Yeah, it's brilliant. I, I watched the game and it was good to see. And you, you do get a lot of satisfaction when, when you see players that... Well, Brad's come from an under-nine, you know, there's been lots of good, good work that's gone into him all the way through the academy, but the last two years we've had him and he's been brilliant, Brad, and that pressing is a part of his game. He's very energetic, he's quick, his movement's really good, and as the manager says, he can score a goal as well. So, um, yeah, really pleased to see him, him, him doing well. Um, and he's, he's, he's another one with a year ahead of him. He'll probably go out on loan um, and get some more first team football and hopefully go and some, score some goals there. And when you were here as a player, the academy was famed. Everyone talked about players coming through the, through the system here at the football club. Obviously, there was a, a spell where we, we were struggling to get those mm. players through. You look at the academy now and the players that are in the first team group, the players that you've worked with at 16s and 18s and are doing at this moment in time. Is it nice that you think outside the football club people are beginning to associate the academy with Peterborough in terms of players yeah. coming through? No, it is good. And, and like you said, when, when I was here as a 15-year-old, um, which feels like an age ago now. Particularly today, yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, cheers, Phil. Uh, no, it, we did have a good academy and it's been well talked about. We had a, we had a youth team that got to the semi-final of the Youth Cup and, and we produced players and it looks like we're getting to, back to somewhere near that now. Albeit we can't stand still and we can't get complacent. There's one thing we can't do is we've got to keep um, producing players as much as we can and, and developing players, and, and that's the key. But you know, I think the key to all of that is making sure that they're challenged every day in the right way. And just finally, you've got so many hats that you're wearing at the moment. But as mm. under-18s manager, you mentioned the game against Deepin. Yeah. It's a men's team. Obviously, mm. it's the first game. Yeah. What are you hoping to get out of that for the players? Um, we spoke to him this morning about it actually, just three key points really, you know, things like the reaction to losing possession and, and the detail in that, what does that look like and, and working on movements etc, just patterns of play really that 
we want them to try tomorrow and even if it doesn't come off that's fine we, we just want them to go and play with a, with a freedom um, it will be a test for them physically as, as I said earlier um, but just those three key elements that we spoke about um, this morning that's what I'm looking for regardless of the result it's just the first game of pre-season most players will be playing 45 minutes um, so it's about seeing that and then moving forward and layering that as the season goes on and I know I said finally but I better mention it your team behind you, Sai, mm. obviously, James, everybody yeah. within that department yeah. um, have worked so hard during this summer to get things right. I'm sure you'd like to thank them if you oh, uh, of course. Yeah, yeah, no, the they've, we've, we've got a good setup within the whole academy, but especially our department, the professional development phase. Sai has been, I spoke about, he's been fantastic since he's come in and he's improving every day. And, and Jimbo and Ev and, and Matty Dye has been helping out of us. We've got a good little team going. And, you know, we all respect each other, get on really well and, and try and make ourselves better each and every day. And that's all you can wish for, really.